So welcome to yet another episode of the NIG podcast. We've got it's a bit of a it's a bit of a record for the NIG podcast. We've got our first return first return guest. Um, and but before we introduce him, we're going to run through a few statistics. Glenn, okay. give us a rundown. It should give you an idea of who we're talking about. So, Glenn, go. Okay. So we're very lucky. We got to watch uh, the Argentine Open final uh, last week. And uh, here we have a gentleman that is the most winning foreigner in the history of the Argentine Open with 10 wins. He joins La Dolfina and they had their 15th title, which is the most winning team in the history, tying Hurlingham. Um, sorry, the second most winning team, second only to Colonel Suarez. In the 23 Opens, that La Dolphina have played since they formed in 2000. They have only missed one final, which was in 2004. This gentleman pulled a muscle and hurt himself in the Hurlingham, but somehow has got himself back out for the Open. And uh, we are so, so happy to have this man on to talk to us again. Polon, thank you so much, mate, and what an incredible win. Congratulations. Thank you very much. This gentleman is getting old, and you don't <laughs> probably don't have many, many guys you interview because I'm back again. So, so it's probably <laughs> more your problem than, than mine. No, we wanted to, we wanted to do an interview with our favourite Uruguayan ten goaler. Again. <laughs> so, not, um, it's, not, uh, not the, it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when, yeah, you're only one, like, when you're the only one and the, the country is so little, that is not that difficult. <laughs> Mate, the support no, we, you get. This is, sorry, Nick. The support you get in the grandstands, Halon, is it's unbelievable. How, how what's the go there? How does that make you feel? No, it's amazing, no, to to play again the Open with that team. Uh, it was a new team, uh, and to play the reach the final, have a, such a, a great season, especially like you guys said uh, after a. A difficult year for my, for me. Uh, it's amazing to finish it out like that uh, with a win, and it was a very special win for the whole La Dolfina team. Uh, not only because we we got back together, but mainly because Poroto was there, and it's, it was the first one with Poroto. And for the Cambiaso family and for the whole Dolfina organization, it was massive. No, Cambiaso, I think, was was probably having much the uh, much more pressure than the ones before. I think he was actually shitting himself for the last couple of weeks. So, <laughs> <laughs> it, was the only, it was the only time that I saw Cambiaso going to the toilet so many times during the week. <laughs> that is so good. Mate, it, it's, it's in there that he, um, he, he said it was the most important win of his career, which is fucking cool. But what, what got me was he, um, he, he said in one of his interviews that he felt that he didn't play very well in the final, that he was watching Perotto. He was, he felt no, like he was, was he, has he spoken to you? He was, to you he, he was actually kidding himself, uh, truly, uh, the, the last couple of weeks. Uh, but imagine the pressure that the guy had. He, he, he's achieved everything oh. in, the, in his life, in his sporting life. And this was like the, the end of the end, the, the biggest thing that he could achieve, I think. And he, know, he knew, always knew that he was, he only had, one maybe two shots at it, and he 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 grabbed it this year, and and he felt it because the last couple of weeks, like I said, the guy was uh, tensed, and you could see that I I know him well, and I've been around him for a while. You could see that the guy was having much more pressure than than he normally has. Uh, so for him, it, it was it was massive, and he knew that, like I said before, maybe he did. It was his only chance to win the open with with his son which is something unreal but the guy you now he you he achi he's achieved everything so many times and he's put new things to his car polo career and he's achieved it again so i don't know what he's gonna uh, like i said i think after this he's gonna put you three with him and let's see if he's that good to win the the, <laughs> the open. and on it what do you think about that nick the nrgc team or the NRG S team, I, I think is it's got it's got a ring to it. We, we've already got a lot of people lining up for that number one spot, that guest star spot on the team. 
There's people getting un- inundated with people who want to who want to play with Team NRG. <laughs> so um, we might have to we have, might have to run some uh, might have to run some auditions, Pelon. I'm just saying, quite a lot of pressure to get yeah. on, to get on the squad. But to <laughs> to get into it, I know Ross, you've got a million questions on the um, on the horses, so I'm going to steal them from you. For once, you've actually done some preparation for the question so i'm not going to steal i'm not going to steal your thunder ross and now he's and now his microphone's gone microphone's gone microphone's gone let's go so i will ask i will ask i I will ask his his behalf so talk us through through the whole triple crown how it went with the horses how they started off how they developed and how you kept them at that amazing level right the way through um whether or not there was any significant differences with how you prepped the horses this year than how you've done it before yeah i think when when we last year at this time of the year when the team got uh, built up i remember talking to adolfo and saying okay i i brought up the team for you now you're in charge of making the whole setup and organization you're in charge of all that and he and he started last year the guy was completely through the year he was thinking on on that day, and he worked the whole year round, and he planned everything uh, for us to be as well organized as we uh, as we could be. And he took horses from everywhere in the world. He had a big help from David Paradise and Scone, and they took like sixteen horses over uh, to Argentina from the states. I think he took a few from England, and he has those things that that the patrons uh, follow him and help him. You know, the guy has won with them the most important tournaments that the, that the, the like David could win. They won the US Open. They won, they won, uh, they won a bit of everything. And with Bob Jornavas, the same, they won. So at the same, they knew that this for him was massive. So they gave him a, a massive hand. And the guy wow. brought uh, horses from everywhere in the world and he managed to organize us the the best that we could and that got got uh, we we saw that during the the whole season no uh, we had a big a, we had like uh, we started probably with 20 horses each but we had a good 15 16 horses that we really really liked and we we took them all the way to to the to Palermo and they managed you know, on the day of the final they were unbelievable and I think that was a, the biggest difference uh, with La Natividad, uh, the, le- the level of our horses yeah. was was outstanding, and we had them we had them really ready for that day, and that's mainly because each of the four guys has have their own organization which work uh, a lot for for us to 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 be ready for that that important game, and and I think it's thanks thanks to Adolfo that organized all that, and thanks to all the the guys that work. <laughs> For, for us to to go get out on the field, no? Incredible. Just seeing, I bet Heko was happy about that too because his string looked a lot better this year than last year as well. They, <laughs> they no, playing I, in the I, main team yeah, last year. They all grabbed kind of a little bit from all those horses because <laughs> as, uh, we we started in Tortuga with all of them, then in Hurlingham we kind of had all of them, and then in Palermo we... Uh, Adolfo gave a little bit to some to to Cria La Dolfina, so they were uh, very well organized. But the guy, is, in that sense, is very uh, helpful. You know, it's it's one of the main things that he has is how such he's such a good teammate, and he knows that he needs to have Pelon organized or Juanma organized for him to win. So he's the first one to always. You you need one more. Uh, why don't you take this one that you maybe play two chakras and you give me that one that I maybe have as a, a, as a spare and I, and I kind of get out of it one, two minutes and, and it's enough. Uh, he, he's, in all of those things, he's, he's really quick and, and helpful, you know. That's the, the yeah. biggest difference that he has, that he's always happy to give you and give you, you know. Pelon, you, your, your, was it your horse that won Best Playing Pony? It was one that I, but it's owned by uh, Valiente, by Bob Jornavas. It's a mare, it's Irenita Rinosa. It's a mare uh, from the McDonald's family that Santiago Chaban uh, bought it as a, as a filly. 
and he brought it up, he made it, and Bob Jornavas bought it like six or five years ago, and I've been playing it for like the last four or five. And she's, she's an outstanding mare, and imagine Bob was there for the last week of the, of the Open, so those things, you know, at the same time for them is massive because they give you a massive hand and they retrieve retreat a, a, a trophy or something like that, that for them it must be a huge achievement and something unreal to, to, for them to win a prize on such a big, important day, no? Absolutely. And had that mare been, had that, your, had that mare been your best mare all the way through or had she come good right at the end? Or it, she... uh, you know, I think I had probably five or six mares that I knew through the, through the season that were going to be my, mind, my main five chakras of the final. You know, you're always looking at having those four or five mares that you know you're going to count them for two chakras on, on the big day, you know. Then you obviously you have many more to play the the extra minutes or the but those if you have that kind of base or that I don't know if you say base of five horses that yeah. if if those one of those four one of those horses uh, fell off there you're gonna be in trouble if if one of the other horses fell off uh, you know that you can kind of deal deal with it you know but mm. these four or five horses of the of the main day are. Are very very important. So so how many how many spare horses did you have? Like per chucker, would your team or would everyone have had? No, I, we put we put two spares on one side and two spares on the other side of the of the field. So maybe I start with three. I, I put two on the other side and one on my side, so I don't have all the horses tied up uh, with the saddle already so early. So if I change on on this side where I have one, I bring one of the other two that I have on the other side. That's how I start. Maybe on the f- fifth or sixth chakra, I already start having two and two. Adolfo has eight and eight. He's always a, a freak that wants to have all the horses kind of uh, ready in j- just in case uh, he wants to get on top of, of one. But I, I kind of deal with it. Like, that's the way I deal with it. How and I, 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 I think I played in the final, I played, I played quite a few because I'm the one that probably... Uh, uses more horses during the game, but I think I played on 13, 12 or 13 horses. Wow. Yeah. Was that because you were in good, like you were in a pretty comfortable position most no, of the no, game? No, like, would it... no, no, because me as a number two, uh, Milo always tells me never to, to try and have a horse tired. So I always kind of use uh, two for sure, and probably maybe three and even four horses uh, per chakra because I I don't want to reach that level of of being tired and and you know and for the team that's very important. It, it seemed Amazing. like something that was um, that was incredible for what you guys did. Even though you scored a lot, your defense was something that looked like it gave them no space. How, did you guys talk a lot about this? I know that you're all amazing oh. players, but. When you're having yeah. a knock-in and stuff like that, have you got a plan beforehand or does it just evolve? No, no, for sure. We've got a plan and we'll get together. It's not a team that we don't like to get over excited with the, uh, with the preparation. You know, it's a team that normally we get together before a semi and if we reach, we get together before a final. Afterwards, we get together after chocolate and we can talk. And But, but kind of tactically... Uh, we get together those couple of times. We know exactly that if we are strong in defense, then the the attack appears. I always kind of when I when I talk to a team or do something with a team, I always tell them if we are organizing defense, you know, then the rest comes. But if you're not organizing defense, you're never gonna be a, a, a or if you're com- if you're good in defense, you're gonna be always a difficult team to beat. You. Know? No? Yes. Uh, I think that's one of the strong teams that uh, La Dolphina has. We play very, very well in defense in the sense that Juanma goes in attack and I go in the back. We do the rotation very, very well, I think. Uh, Poroto reads the game like, like Pablo. Pablo was amazing uh, with us because he was outstanding on that. And Poroto at the same time, he's, when he turned 17 and he reads the game the same as a uh, really, really old guy like me, 42, 41, uh, reads the game, you know. <laughs> so he, that's, that's the amazing thing that he has. Uh, and, and another thing, important thing that we had mentioned before starting was 
was not to make fouls because we knew that Geta is very strong on that. And I think we are a team, we are a team that doesn't make that many fouls. So obviously, if you take, a, if you cut the fouls and you cut the the solo runs to goal of the other team, I think you're you're in good shape to, uh, to towards mm. the game. Glenn, you had something. Go, Nick. The um, what is the the pitch? What is the pitch like by the end of the by the by the by that final? Is it still you know, running really well, or is it a little bit bouncy? Or, uh, uh, pa or what's Palermo, going? Palermo, the last four or five years, we've had a little bit of trouble of having a really really good field the way we used to be. Now in the in the pandemia, we in the pandemic, we we kind of watch a few. Everyone watched finals from 2013, 14, and I think the field in the final always looked. Much better than what it is now. We had a we had a tough year this year in Argentina because of rain. Uh, it's been very very dry. Uh, the field until the semi final was very kind of average. Then we had very nice rain just after the semi final. No, just after the game before the semis, I think, and just after the semis. So we had really good game uh, rain, and I think the the field for the final was much better than the the previous games, but. Even though, yeah, by the four, five, fifth, or sixth chakra, the field gets chopped up, and obviously it's, it's more difficult to to for the for the for the ball to hit the ball. But uh, it's something that uh, I think they uh, the, because this year Palermo finished early, they're redoing the field at the minute. So hopefully we're gonna have a much better field next year because obviously for the spectator, if the field is not that good, the level of polo. It's obviously not that good, and for us to play on a on a good field is not the same as as to play on an average field, you know. So it, hopefully it improves in that aspect. Yeah, now boys, I promised Pilon that we wouldn't hold him up too long because he's very busy nah. there writing. Now, the, now, um, go. You can keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, well, how, what's your thoughts on next year's teams? Who's going to come out strong, and what do you reckon? Look, There's some pretty big mix-ups. Look where I am. There. Look where I am. Look, look where I am. <laughs> Jim, nice. Jim. Talking about next year, look, I, I need to I, I need to start doing plenty of that, I think. <laughs> Good, man. Uh, <laughs> no, but Jim, I, I, he's getting I, ready for it. He's getting ready I, now. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, no? Especially from sure. our side. Uh, you realize that the guys on the other side of the road or on the other team, they have made very strong team to to beat us, you know, so that yeah. Yeah. It, obviously it's a motivation for one. And I think that quite a few teams that are looking very, very strong. Uh, so, so it's going to be, it's going to be very, very fun for, to play and, and also for, for you guys to, to watch. Unless you guys quickly get on a team, uh, you're going to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. What's um? What's your thoughts with regards to Elastina's horses? Like watching from the outside, there, there seemed to be quite a difference between. Well, there's a big difference between your team and everyone's. But it, it sort of is it? Are they it's traditionally it's a very? They're traditionally a very strong horse team. But what's the what's your thoughts these days? No, no, they they're still a very strong strong uh, organization. Elastina for sure is uh, the biggest or one of the biggest organization in terms of horses and everything, organize, organization, everything. Uh, maybe in the last couple of years, they've had trouble with the team, I think. Uh, I don't know, don't ask me why, because I'm not in the inside where you need to be inside every day to know what is happening. Uh, maybe the results, the results haven't come, and obviously that doesn't help uh, for the confidence, and probably that's why kind of Facundo decided to go and 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 find another road, and and I think uh, maybe it's going to do them well. Uh, but like I say, it's very difficult to talk. Uh, yeah, they're very well organized. Yeah. If you if you give me any of their bunch of courses, I would be more than happy to receive them, and I'm sure they're they're, they're going to be outstanding. Uh, mm. But you know, it's not an easy one. <laughs> Just talking about Faku there. What? Uh, how do? How will that team line up? Do you think who will play back? I think. Well, no, I think Facundo will play back because he mm. kind of said that he will play one or, or back. Teta wanted to play one for sure. 
So I think those are the two positions that are going to be for sure uh, confirmed. And then the other two, we we always going to be in a doubt. Probably, probably Bartolito maybe stays number three, uh, and and Pablo goes and plays plays number two. Uh, that's something for sure that uh, they're going to have to uh, see. But I think when you have four really strong players like that, uh, they're going to gel and gel in well. Have four players that know how to play polo. They're going to work out. Uh, and, and they're going to be a very, very strong team. No? And yeah, 12 months to get horses ready, organized, and it'll be amazing. I just saw on um, on Instagram uh, Facunda with the first time he's had the La Natividad cap on. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. No, I haven't. I have who they're playing is. I don't have the, I don't have those, those Instagram things or that, but yeah, but for sure, it's something going to be, the, the team is going to be amazing. Uh, it, it would be something strange and funny to see him on, on, on with another shirt, especially competing against Elertina. But it's going to be crazy. It's a new, it's a okay. new thing. No? We have to know. Okay, we have to know who partied the hardest on the final night. Uh, Poroto went quite good. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and around, Poroto was average. Then he did a he did a mistake actually. We all went to Tequila, which is the massive nightclub in the most important <laughs> nightclub in, in in BA, and he decided to go to Pilar. The following day, we said, "How was Pilar?" He said, "No, no, it was terrible." And I and we parted. But typical, you know, those kids that don't know how to how to move at <laughs> night. They don't have, a, they don't have our, our experience. I mean, he said, you know, he can be very good on the field, but outside at night we we have him in control. I told you, you could follow me. <laughs> the boys. Oh, that is too good. That is too yeah. good. So Adolfo let his hair down a bit? Adolfo was in good shape, yeah. But we kept on going a little. No, the worst thing is that I had uh, my uh, my daughter jumping at 8 o'clock in the morning, jumping at Ooh. tournament. So I went until 5.30 at night, and then I had to wake up one hour and a half late later to to go and watch to do daddy's daddy's things so, you're a good man you're a good man nah. did Juanma have some good moves on the dance floor Juanma is he a good dancer Juanma, no 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 Juanma doesn't <laughs> know how to dance. that's something <laughs> to put on Instagram or whatever you want Juanma doesn't know how to dance <laughs> oh me neither I can't say anything the um mate uh, you thought of show something that's cool because he, he played outstanding the other day in the final, so he, he knows that part pretty good. Yeah. He was incredible. Yeah, he, he was, was amazing. incredible. How old's your uh, daughter? Uh, my one is nine. Amalia is nine. Ah, right. Show yeah. jumping. That's awesome. She That's likes, great. That's really good. They jump with Adolfo's youngest one in there in Cañuela. So oh, they're cool. Get, cool. Yeah, that's Nick? one. So what's next, Polonia? Obviously, back in the gym training. You're gonna take a break for Christmas. No, 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 the... no, not yet. I'm I'm in the gym, but I'm not back on the gym. I'm not back on the gym. <laughs> I'm in Chile. I'm in Chile at the minute with my wife's uh, family. We're gonna spend Christmas and New Year's here. Uh, I stay till the fifth of January, and then I move on. I go with a bunch of green horses, I, and I go myself and Vicente, my 10-year-old boy. Uh, we go to Cordoba to Cambiasos Farm for like a week, that they, they do a little tournament there, and we move on to Trenquelauque, to Juan Mas place for another week, uh, that we also play a few tournaments, and we have fun, and we take the kids, and they play a little bit, so for us, it's, it's uh, one of the most important uh, parts of the uh, year, because it's really good fun. Uh, and then we, we move on to Palm Beach around the 18th. And then we go, like I said, we go to Alula uh, in Saudi on the 24th of January for like three or four days. And where are you going to be? Where are you going to be based in Palm Beach this year? In Palm yeah. Beach, I'm playing David with David Paradise. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm lucky or not, but I'm going to share a field with David Paradise, which uh, it's a... Uh, a incredible experience to be on the same field uh, with him because it can be very dangerous. Uh, <laughs> I was on the earth. 
No, no, but uh, talking seriously, we, I'm playing for Scone with Poroto. Uh, they, uh, Poroto, uh, a South African, kind of South African, uh, American uh, four goaler. Uh, and, and, and the most important one is David Paradise, a uh, great polo player. <laughs> That'll be fun. Yes, yeah, sir. That'd be great. That'd be great fun. Cool. And and where are you gonna be? Do you know where you're gonna be based out of? And we're gonna be in Valiente. Sorry, we're gonna be in Valiente because Adolfo is playing with uh, Bob. That is, everyone's very happy because he's coming back. So Brilliant. The, the 22 goal with Luquita Criado and Peque Gonzalez. So it's gonna be a fun season because we're all gonna be on the same on the same place and it's an amazing setup and uh, Good it's gonna be a lot of a, a lot of fun. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we might have to edit that bit out because Rob, Rob asked us not to. Rob asked us not to let slip with um, who was going to be in who's going to be in Valiente this year. So we might have to cut that <laughs> cut that bit out. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we we were speaking to we were speaking to Rob last night. Um, he's going to be joining us down in New Zealand when we go down to Ross's. So it's going to be the three of us, and and Rob's going to come down with us as well, which is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So yeah, but I mean, Valiente, one of my favourite places in the world. It's just incredible, yeah, and uh, you, yeah, and you'll 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 probably get to play on the on the Nick May Memorial Field. That's the one right up from the from the stables. It's dedicated memorial. to yeah, memorial. Yeah, yeah. memorial. Yeah, yeah. It's still with us. Or was that the end of your Apollo career? That game. I, I think that was. I think that was pretty much. That was that was the last. Uh, the sudden realization that I was never gonna be <laughs> that I was never gonna be any went out on a high on a horse. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um well, I'm I'm very conscious of the uh, of the of the time. Ross, have you got anything more? No, no, no mate. Thank you so much, Pilon. You're a legend. And congratulations. Yeah, it was yeah. just so much fun watching you play. Thank we you guys. Were, we were jumping all over the place here in uh, in Norway when you yeah when you when you got your yeah, you know, when you had that run to goal and you've, you've no, no, we were seriously. We, <laughs> no, we, we were, were, mate. You're in, we you were, were front and center on all their Instagram stuff. Yeah, Nick yeah, was, we Nick were was diligent. So I was, it, we, it, when, when you, when you got your run to go and you got, and you got your goal from, you know, when you got the run in, we were just absolutely jumping all over the place. It was amazing. You, you, you had us worried for a little while. You did have us worried for a little while, but, um, yeah. mate, what a game. What a game and very many congratulations. Thank you so much for coming back to us so quickly. And um yeah, look look forward to interview number three. Marie. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully after the US Open win. A little bit a little bit longer. But no, no. <laughs> hopefully we have a sound year that the age is uh, getting there. So hopefully we have a sound year and we have a, a fun year, plenty of polo around the world, I think. Uh, there is nowadays, so hopefully everyone keeps safe and everyone has has a lot of fun, which is the main the main idea. Yeah, awesome, mate. And um, and and finally, we the three of us are planning to be in the UK a couple of times in uh, over the summer. So it'd be great to come down and, and watch you do your thing um, for real. So yeah, yeah, thoroughly looking forward to that. Gonna, we're gonna be there with with Monterroso and Vikings in at Flemish. Uh, where we have a lot of fun and actually uh, uh, Alessandro and Siri helped me a lot this year with uh, Machitos Mel, which was one of those five important ones. So thanks awesome. to them. Well, that's one that I... What was that, that one's did. name? Uh, Machitos Cheyenne. She was, she was outstanding. She was, we, we brought her from the States, from Mariana Guerre. Uh, the idea was to to play her the whole season and she ended up being my two chapter horse with, with two or three more and she was outstanding so that's a, a big thank you to 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 the Monterros and the Viking camp. Well Good they job. must have been stoked about having a horse going to that level and doing well. Yes, yes they were Very they were cool. really happy that before for them it needs to be very special to, to have a horse on such an important team on a, such an, an important day. Uh, and to be participate to participate of of that day. At the end of the day, they give us a big hand, so so we're more than grateful to them and and 
and hopefully they, they enjoyed it as well. Amazing. Cool. Yeah. Well, cool, mate. Thanks so much again. Thank you. Thank you, well, Thank you so much. Rap, boys. Yeah, we, we don't want to eat into the, your workout time. We don't want to keep you away from the gym. And <laughs> no, no, no. Look, look, look at the guns on him. You're pretty yeah. gun no, shit, mate. Look, yeah. look at the way, look at the way my, my biceps, I don't know if you're going to have a look. Oh, yeah. But, wait, wait. No, by the way, my bicep is at the minute after the operation. No, I don't know if you can see it, but it's like a Popeye. Whoa. <laughs> what happened? That's how, that's how, and that's how I won the opener with a Popeye uh, muscle. Popeye? <laughs> spinach. Too much spinach. No, no, no. no. The, the, that's after the operation. We, my bicep, went well, on before my bicep left and that's it. Getting old and old. Look, yeah. look, look. Look at that. That's wild. Jeez. Jeez. Still <laughs> anyway, anyway, mate, anyway, you're the, one of the most loved players in the world, and we're so grateful. Thank you so much. Mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. You're a legend. Thank, thank you. Have a wonderful, uh, a wonderful Christmas. I don't know you if too, uh, Father Christmas is going to bring many presents to you, Nick. But bueno, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully <laughs> He's not that far away from him. Hopefully to the rest. Yeah, we, I've, been, I've been pretty good, so hopefully I'll, I'll get a couple of <laughs> Yeah. That's pretty good. Thank, God, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Speak to you soon. Dale. Take care. Yeah. Ciao, ciao. See you, Dale. mate. Thank you. Yeah.